Welcome to Neogen's Monday Mycotoxin and Crop Report for September 18th. This week's headlines. Hurricanes impact on harvest progress. Corn maturity falls farther behind normal. Dr. Jones' tip on dairy feed. The spring wheat harvest is now 95% complete, eight points ahead of the five-year average. Drought conditions in Montana and the Northwest have hurt yields and quality. 96% of barley acres have been harvested, three points ahead of the five-year average. Our Don in Barley map continues to reflect a substantial report of Pennsylvania greater than seven parts per million. This week's Don in Wheat map shows confirmed reports across the producing regions this year. Managing varying grade factors will be important to overall product quality for flour millers. Wide variation in protein levels and damage between regions have been seen. Excessive rains from Harvey and Irma over the last couple of weeks have drenched corn production from Georgia and Texas up to Kentucky and Tennessee. Below normal temperatures prevailed in the eastern Corn Belt and Tennessee Valley. Year-to-date growing degree days reflect the delay in corn maturity. Corn development should be monitored closely under these conditions. 96% of corn has reached the dough stage, one point behind the five-year average. 75% of corn has moved into the dented stage, six points behind the five-year average. Colorado, South Dakota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Pennsylvania, and Missouri are well behind their five-year averages. 21% of corn is now in the mature stage, 10 points behind the five-year average. The percent of corn in poor to very poor condition remained at 13%, still almost double 2016. Corn in good to excellent condition remained the same this week and continues to lag 2016 levels. 10 of the country's 18 top corn producing states report corn in double digit poor to very poor conditions. South Dakota, North Dakota, Michigan, Kansas, Indiana, Colorado, Iowa, Illinois, Nebraska, and Wisconsin. 5% of corn acres have been harvested, one point below the five-year average. Our mycotoxins in corn map remains the same this week. Additional late season rains may promote more fumonisin development after this dry summer. Corn across the southern U.S. that may now be mature will remain in fields longer than anticipated, raising potential for toxin growth. The volatile weather patterns put crops under stress and magnifies potential mycotoxin growth. Three potential risks are aflatoxin in drought areas shown, fumonisin growth from excessive rains, and early frost to immature corn for dawn. Stored grain in flooded areas carries significant health risk due to mold and damage and must be segregated. Check USDA requirements for details. Watch this space each week for updates as the corn harvest advances. This week, Dr. Gwendolyn Jones returns to provide a feed technical update. First reports on current levels of aflatoxin yes corn show increased levels of aflatoxin in corn from Oklahoma and Texas. The biggest concern with aflatoxin in dairy cow rations is the excretion into milk. Aflatoxin B1 is metabolized by the liver creating an hydroxylated metabolite called aflatoxin M1, or AFM1. AFM1 can be detected in milk as quickly as 12 hours of feeding an aflatoxin-contaminated diet to dairy cows. Both AFB1 and AFM1 are considered Group 1A carcinogens. Hence, why the regulatory guidelines by the FDA are very strict on aflatoxin in dairy cow rations. Aflatoxin is subject to action levels by the FDA. This is currently at 20 ppb in the diet. A factor that is considered to be important for influencing regulatory limits of both total aflatoxin and AFM1 is the rate at which AFB1 is converted and excreted as AFM1 into the milk of dairy cows. The ability of cattle to transform AFB1 in a feed to AFM1 in milk has been examined in many studies and demonstrated that the carryover rate in low yielding dairy cows is from 1 to 2% and in higher in the area cows around 6%. Problem is that most previous studies on the carryover of aflatoxins from feed to milk were in what we would consider today as low yielding dairy cows. A recent study carried out by Churchill et al. at Cornell University used cows with a high milk production level for a more realistic picture of high producing intensive dairy operations in the US. 
Linear regression was used to calculate the relationship between ingested and excreted concentrations of aflatoxin and AFM1. The findings suggest that in high-producing dairy cows who have a carryover rate of 6.5%, current regulations of 20 ppb total aflatoxin levels allowable in dairy cow feed are not protective to avoid violation of the 0.5 ppb AFM1 regulatory levels for milk. With several states already reporting high levels of aflatoxin in 2017 corn, farmers should be vigilant about proper storing and regular testing of feedstuffs for dairy cows to reduce the risk of aflatoxin in milk. Neogen's reveal Q Plus Max for aflatoxin offers an aqueous solution which saves you money while giving accurate and fast quantitative results. Gypsa approved for AccuScan Gold and Pro readers. Thanks for watching and for sharing the YouTube link with colleagues. Have a great week.